What's up, my friends? We're here to talk about Artifact Remix boosters that have just apparently been brought up for Magic the Gathering Arena and will be a thing starting, what is it, tomorrow? Is it tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, that starts tomorrow. April 2nd. So, nah, first of all, just so you know, this ain't an April Fool's joke. I have abstained from all April Foolsery today, actually. I think this is the first April Fool's in a long time where I haven't fooled anybody but let's not uh let's not get too far down the road before we share the link in the discord so dun, 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 dun. gotta share the link There we go. Perfect. Okay. Man, it's been a long day. I'm glad we're here to chill. Let's do our hellos. What's up? Who's already chatting in here? Hello, Jess, Kenziki, Eng, Tenfor, Valhalla, Error, Gerthulu, Felonius T, Clayton, Kenny, Zircon, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Sean, Millmaster, Joe, Eric, Splenda, Yamagoro, who else, who else, John, Juglum, Jesse, Fisher, uh, Beasley, Jason, Josh, hello guys, hello, hello to all of you, what's up Aldini, how are you guys doing tonight, life treating you well, oh, Eric Critton, you know what, buddy? Thanks for joining the channel membership. Bear, your new shield with pride, good sir. You're already getting the shield bearer's welcome. Welcome aboard. You have only one responsibility as a shield bearer. If Adam Daly ever shows his gross, repugnant face, you spam the anti-Adam Daly sign, okay? It's not something you have to worry about most of the time. But if you ever wonder in the emoticons, with the face, with the little red circle, that's if Daly shows up. You get them with that. You get you get them with that. Uh, all right. Well, like I said, long day, man. Long day. Had to go and see the doctor today. Things are mostly good. The blood tests and stuff I had, all that stuff came back pretty good. Uh, but I do have to go for some follow-up stuff in a few months. And everything's not exactly where we need it to be, but... I'm, I am all right, and I don't have anything wrong with me that's going to alter my life expectancy. So we'll leave it at that for now. Since I talked about it in the earlier stream, I know some people are going to be curious what's going on with that. So that's enough of that kind of an update. I'm fine, and the party rolls onwards. Bro, today on Facebook, just randomly scrolling through it, I found myself in one of the card trader ads. It's such a weird experience where I'm like, Wait, that's me. What's going on here? And then I look below and there's comments from people. And it's like, yo, I used to cook this guy's burger. I used to serve this guy burgers. He's a good dude. And I went and looked and I'm like, I clicked on it. I'm like, I do recognize that guy. He did kick. He did cook me burgers. It's so, so nutty. So nutty how all this works, man. I love getting to do this, by the way, guys. This is super fun for me. Getting to hang out with you guys, make videos, talk smack. Talk magic, talk that goodness. So yes, yes, I am. I am good to go. We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about um, the artifact booster situation for Arena. And full disclosure, I have been enjoying Arena quite heartily. Like I've played a ton of arena for example today i played enough that i ended up with 10 wins and i definitely didn't win all my games so i don't know exactly how many games i played but i don't know probably at least solid 15 different games of magic getting in there oh and by the way by the way arena people don't miss out for the next like i don't know 12 to 15 hours or whatever they're still having the event it's um it's an April Fool's gold booster pack uh, event where basically they give you six of the gold packs. You open them, you get 36 rares, and you build your deck 
out of all rares. Talk about insanely swingy. Man, I got to do some dirty <laughs> some dirty nonsense. And you get free cards for winning in the event too. It costs nothing to play in. You get a couple of free rares and a goofy looking um what was it? A possum. A goofy looking possum sleeve. It's dope. It's dope. Jess, you're sorry all your beliefs trigger me. Your spelling's triggering me, son. You think a magic historian should believe in magic? I do. I believe in magic like like McDonald's. McDonald's is more magical than your beliefs. You know why? Because at least it's fucking tangible. At least it's tangible. You just believe in a bunch of dumb bullshit because your brain's broken. So thinking that I should believe in magic. If I believed in magic, why would I be here, bro? I'd be making some kind of deal with the devil. I'd be like, okay, I'll let you elongate my ball sack by three inches in exchange for the power to blast lightning out of my eyes. And he'd be like, yep, done deal. And if you guys are wondering about that, that means you don't know shit about the arcane or to how to make deals with devils. You're all like, oh, I thought I'd do that. No, 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 son. Just let him lengthen your sack a little, right? That's all it takes. Plus, I can use the extra room because I got some big fucking balls to start with, right? So yeah, if magic was real, guess what? I wouldn't be here talking to you. I'd be doing fucking sorcery, or I'd be sorcery streaming, bro. I'd be blo I'd be broadcasting directly into your fucking mind. Whee! See, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, does it? All you got was an annoying noise, you dumb bastard. Cause magic isn't fucking real and someone's gonna come along <laughs> yeah man it's real look i got it fuck you felonious t the arena sealed was tons of fun you played four colors with multiple mythics bro i played white green i had tristani i had two copies of enchantment that let you look at the top card of your deck and play creatures that cost two or less for free i had um calyx what else did i have that was a lot of fun what else? Oh, that one wrath that wipes out all the creatures and gives you uh, uh, a friggin' incubate token equals the number of creatures. Dirty! The invasion of... Is it Zendikar? Whatever it is. Whatever invasion it is, because that's the only time I've ever played invasions in my life. When you destroy it, you get an 8-8 eight, eight that says... Whenever you attack, your guys can just do their damage straight to the player. Oh, yeah! Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh! Uh. I had that out and a 10-10 incubate token at the same time. And I'm like, double elbows from the top fucking rope, bitch! Bam! Right into the eye sockets. Right into the eye sockets. Listen, real aliens, if you think that you're being clever with your sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable, <laughs> indistinguishable from magic, that means science is the formalization of magic. You weren't here yesterday when I yelled about how if magic was real, it would literally be fucking science. So you're just late to the party saying shit I already been saying with your little winky face. Winky face, bitch, I already said it. I already said it. That's what I said. I get. I said, guess what? The internet, that's magic. Electricity, that's fucking magic, right? For real. I can broadcast my fucking junk across the universe. Bam! I can send my dick and balls into space, son. Right? For real. For real. But yeah, magic is, magic is goofy nonsense because it ain't real. And if it was real, I'd be doing it. I'd be fucking flying the dragon, throwing fireballs around and shit. Get some! Get some! <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right dj extra sack room is an upside that's how you know you're making good deals with the devils huh that's how, that's how you know dark star you're late what are artifact remix boosters sorry man i already went over every single detail of the boosters and i absolutely refuse to repeat them so maybe if you just scrub back and watch the first like 10 minutes of the stream then you'll be able to hear all the details that's probably the easiest way so catch back up to the stream after you've heard all the details about the artifact packs but don't come back until you have because if you don't know all the details you're going to fail the quiz. And I went over it in exacting, excruciating point by point. Here's what's in it. Here's what it means. Here's when it's happening. And you missed 
all of it. So everyone's going to think that you're a fool, bro. They're going to be like, you don't know. Your ignorance is palpable. Like, like the devil holding a ball bag. <laughs> so yeah, we're all, we're all judging you now, Dark Star. He's probably gone back to scrub through. And waste his time, because I haven't said nothing. Oh, he's still here. What if I pay you $5? Well, you know what? Then you get to be Lord of the Board, and the jig is up. I lied. I haven't even said nothing about it yet. You know, <laughs> you know it takes forever for me to give any actual details. I got a lot of ranting to do. I had to talk about deals with the devil in my ball bag. You think I got time to talk about the title of the stream? Come on, man. Come on. Dark... Star. Are you a uh, sure about that? Ah, uh, see what I did there? That's your fucking name. That was some clever shit, bro. That, that was some clever shit. Bam. Oh wait, I didn't wipe the bottom off here. Hold on. Cauldron didn't do this today. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop. All right, there we go. Clay membership for member for sixty three months. His message says, Mike sold this soul to the devil for good health, so magic is real. Plump the buns. Bro, 63 months. That's crazy. That's over five years. Well done, Clayton. You have been a member for a long time, which makes perfect sense, because in real life, you're just a big, fat, throbbing member. Maybe not fat. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you sold the null rod you got in high school a few years ago for 80 bucks, heavily played. That's got to feel good, right? That's got to feel good, getting a bunch of cash for this beat-up little rectangle you got sitting around. All right, so shall, what do you guys think? Should we actually talk about the the, the remix posters? Chicka, chicka, fucking remix. All right. <laughs> so this, like I said, is a real thing. Artifact Remix Boasters. It is a two-week event that is going on on Arena. Why is it happening? Because Wizards realized that they couldn't gank our balls hard enough for gold when it came to the cube drafts because people were like, no, I don't like phantom nonsense where I don't get to keep the cards. And Wizards are like, we're trying to drain your gold, especially before new sets come out so you'll buy stuff. We got to pull that sweet gold out of your account. How do we do it? So now they're doing these remix drafts, right? 10,000 gold, 1,500 gems, regardless of whether you're doing best of one style or best of three style. So doesn't operate like quick drafts in that regard, okay? Now the breakdown of it, this is the, fir the, the first remix draft. So they're planning on doing this again. The first remix draft is built around a central mechanical theme, artifacts across the multiverse. So they have... Stuff from Brothers War, they have stuff from Mirrodin, they've got stuff from Phyrexia All Will Be One. You got um but one of the one of the things that they have that's not really available in other areas is jumpstart cards and anthology cards. So there'll also be artifacts specifically from jumpstart and anthologies. So every pack also includes an artifact land. So in every single pack you open you're going to get one artifact dual land. So it's two colors, right? The packs, 13 cards each. So you get your normal one rare or mythic rare, three uncommons, eight commons, and an artifact dual land. That's the breakdown overall. So I don't really know, like in terms of the payouts, it's exactly the same as um, the best of one and best of three style drafts, the up to 2,200 gems. And... They've got like a little primer to tell you like white blue is all in artifacts. So it uses big fat creatures like gear, Ser gear seeker serpent and stuff. Black blue is um, control trying to use stuff like Tezzeret's touch. So it's not just artifact cards, but it's cards that care about artifacts, right? Uh, red black is going to be an artifact sacrifice style deck where you put out crap like Iker, Iker uh, Wellsprings. And you just, boom, put it out, draw your card, sack it, draw your card, that kind of thing. Green red is modified mid-range. So it's just trying to have the biggest creatures, real straightforward. White green is plus one, plus one counters. So similar, you can, you can build a big creature. You can try and make a bunch of donks big enough. 
White Black is attrition style sacrifice deck where, I mean, Black is well known for this stuff. And White's been dipping into it too, where you make your opponent sack a creature like with the Benelish Knight or Benelish, uh, Benelish something. I can't remember his name. One Black and one Pay of Black. Each player sacks a creature, right? Uh, Blue Red is Pirate Artifact. So you got a bunch of pirate themes going on. Black Green is Food mid range. White Red. <coughs> oh. White red is modified aggro. So you got creatures using that four Mirrodin stuff, bro. The four Mirrodin equipment is actually pretty solid in limited stuff. Obviously, it hasn't made much of a splash in standard. Uh, blue green is based on clues and trying to control control your opponents. So uh, the idea is they're trying to create a novel experience. Like it says, we know that some players avoid cube because it doesn't help them build their collection. So this is a way... To get cards from Jumpstart and other stuff too. It says, well, there'll be more remix drafts. Much of that is up to you. So it's really going to see how well it does. The fact that they're trying to pull 10 Gs off you each time, like that, that's a feel bad right there, right? Like the 10 Gs, the 10 Gs for this kind of a draft doesn't feel worth it. Like, I don't know. Maybe once, maybe I'll use a token to hop in and try it out once, but it's got like a a range of different stuff, but it's not bringing anything new you can't craft with, a, with wild cards, right? Jesse, you couldn't, you couldn't handle it if it was another paper product. Bro, that makes sense. There are a ton, there are a ton of paper products and the only break from it is May, and that's just because Wizards screwed up so bad with the product line that they had to fold two sets into one. Otherwise, May would be the Thunder Junction follow-up set. Speaking of follow-ups to Thunder Junction, there is a new piece of lore that came out today that seems somewhat competent. So it's follow-up lore talking about Jace, but it really feels like something that should have come after March of the Machines. And so now, after Jace has been revealed as Ashiok, they're like, here's the backstory to Jace saving Vraska and when he got stabbed with the Silex. And you're like, this should have been, like, forever ago. It's pretty unsatisfying to get this story now. So, my brain just goes, we're going to need more than this. It's too little, too late. Too little, too late. Bone Falcon, wait, what are you... <laughs> Jess, you're walking to the subway or you're bringing the phone with you? Careful. Uh, careful. They might ban you from the subway. <laughs> Bo doll. Oh, just the, you're just throwing aspersions on, <laughs> on Jess's character, bro. Siri so says, paper's the past, old man. The future is digital. Let me put my digits all up in you. Digital. I'm going to put the digit all up in your butt. <laughs> so, yeah, the new Lord, it doesn't seem the new story installment doesn't feel like it's poorly written like some of the other ones. But it's not satisfying because we should have been told this before. There's no reason to show it to us now randomly. It feels forced and crappy and because it's attached to thunder junction story and thunder junction story is just jason Vraska could take a space baby and leave and you're like you didn't build us towards this at all you did nothing to build us towards this at all this isn't following up on anything and now you're gonna just be like oh jason Vraska, and they remember their relationship and go oh, captain and all this stuff oh my captain touch my gorgon jugs like oh it's just. What's up with bridges and lore? All the bridges in Magic the Gathering are based on the bridges of Madison County. So to really understand that, you need to watch that movie, Splendor. Sean, the price of Magic is too damn high. Yeah, it sure is. It sure tis. You don't get how they're around and not deactivated like other fractions? Well, here's the thing. When you want to understand it from a story perspective, shut up! 
That's that's wizard's perspective. It doesn't make any sense. It's dumb nonsense. Oh, now how did Nahiri stop being a Phyrexian? She just knocked her spike arms off? Like, they just went, no, we wanted to have the moment of you be all like, wow, cool, they're Phyrexian, wow, this is scary and whatever. But we don't, that doesn't count. We still want to use them for other stuff, so it just doesn't count. We, how are we supposed to put them in cowboy hats? How are we supposed to put them in cowboy hats if they're dead? Fuck you. How are we supposed to use the artwork we already have kicking around if they're dead? Fuck you. Right? Like, that's what it turns into. It's so stupid. It's so just underwhelming. It's so disappointing. And so, like, I read it and I was just like, it's crazy that this doesn't feel like bad writing. And yet it's still incredibly obnoxious. You know? Where you're like... Why didn't you tell us this earlier? This is literally a follow-up to War of the Spark. This should have been, like, this, not War of the Spark, um, like the whole Phyrexian War thing, where they just abruptly changed the story, because Elspeth was supposed to sacrifice herself to the Silex. That's literally the artwork they commissioned. And they used the artwork in the set anyways, showing Elspeth being unmade by the Silex, sitting down, pouring man into it and being unmade in a heroic sacrifice. But they change their mind at the last second about the story when, nope, Jace is invisible. And then Elspeth jumps through a hole and somehow knows Jace is there and exactly what's going on with nobody saying anything. And then she runs up and stabs Jace. And then she jumps out into the blind attorneys. And then she goes even further than the blind attorneys. Wow! She goes to a place that doesn't exist and Sarah's ghost or something is there and she can freeze time. Wow. Okay, great. So, who cares? Who cares that it's like, Jason Brown's have a heartfelt moment. Who gives a fuck? What is this bullshit with the space baby? Explain to us how there was nothing in the vault but the space baby, but you made a set with 50 cheese bag artifacts just using artifacts that are a fucking Zakama. One of them shows Zakama. It's Zakama coming out of the fucking vault. Fuck you, you fucking cheese bags. Dark Star, you're thankful they give stories out for free. Imagine if Hasbro realized they could start trying to charge $5 per chapter. Uh, newsflash, bro. They used to include the books in fat packs. Then they tried to sell the books individually, but no one will pay for their dog shit lore. And they don't fucking deserve it because they do bullshit like the War of the Spark novel where these greedy assholes didn't have both halves of the book ready. They didn't have both halves of the book ready in time. They hired two different people to write two different halves of the book because that makes fucking sense. That's how you write a story. Have two different writers write two different fucking halves of it. That's how you get coherence. But you know how you make it even better? You go, oh, the first writer doesn't have it done by the deadline. Oh, okay. Well, then we'll just make the second half the first part of the book. I'm sorry. What'd you say? Yeah, we'll just sell them the second half as, as the book. No, but like there's big story moments where Niv Mizzet gets killed and it's this big thing because he's planned to fight Bolas, die fighting Bolas, and come back. He's planned for this. And they're just like, now yeah, just really it's the second half. So the story starts. Niv Mizzet's already been killed by Nicol Bolas and he's in a fucking spirit box, right? And he's with Ugin. And the story literally goes, the spirit dragon said to the dragon spirit, Gorp. And the dragon spirit said to the spirit dragon, Gimpity Goop. And the and then the, the spirit dragon said back to the dragon spirit, Flamp, flamp. And then the dragon spirit said to the spirit dragon, Gimpity Goo. And you're just like, what the fuck kind of leading is that? But don't worry, because the first chapter is even better. The first chapter is Teo talking about the wonders of indoor plumbing and waxing philosophical about animal farts. That's how the book starts. That's how the book starts because they started halfway through. So no, they tried. They tried to sell the lore, bro. They tried and they failed so miserably with War of the Spark that they buried the Theros Beyond Death book. They buried it. There's an entire novel as big as War of the Spark written about Theros Beyond Death. And they were so terrified of the backlash over how shitty the story would be that they deep sixed it and they gave us 16 sentences as the story instead. They went, here's the story of, of Theros Beyond Death. Elspeth fought a lot of battles and won them all. And then she put Erebos under a rock. And then she left fucking the world. She just left. And and then Calyx, who had been built to chase after her, went, oh, bro, that's not cool. I wish I could follow her. And then he could because he's just a planeswalker now. And off he went. And that's it. That's the story of Theros Beyond Death. Theros can't give a fuck more like it. Like, for real. 
that's the story they wrote. Elspeth lost the shadow spear that she got there somehow. Calix just stopped chasing her, even though when she was in Capenna, working at the fucking laundromat to try and figure out who she was. She was worried about Calix coming. But it's okay, because she ran away and picked up a lead pipe. She picked up a lead pipe, and then the whole story of Capenna was about how Elspeth had to work for the mob to get a dagger, because she needed weaponry. And the maestros were all like, well, we'll give you weaponry if you do jobs for us. And she's like, I'll only do some jobs for you. I'm sorry, you're a planeswalker. You fucking stole the sword of the gods. And then you had a spear that was a god slayer. And now you're lead pipe in it, bro? What, what, were you smoking crack through this pipe? What happened? So, yeah. Yeah. Fisher, it doesn't matter if the books are written by different authors. It's not as big a deal because they're telling at least one one chunk of the actual story of the three different parts, right? But yeah, man, like I, I want Wizards to fix the lore. I absolutely do. It's funny though, reading that, reading what they put out, I'm like, this is confidently written. But it's aggravating that we're just getting this now. It's so haphazard and slipshod and just stapled in the middle. What is it? What is it? Nathan says, 51 months supporting the best rants on the internet. Hell yeah, buddy. I am very good at ranting. <laughs> Zeria, Final Fantasy 15 got an updated and coherent ending. I haven't played Final Fantasy since 12 because 12, while I really enjoyed the Gambit system... I found the characters to be just completely empty and they were like, they were super tropey, super empty. And I was like, bro, like I came to you for, for storytelling, for world building. You know what I mean? Storytelling matters. World building matters. Do the story right. And you can get me guys. I got pulled in by a horror movie last night. This has never happened to me. No horror movie has ever captivated my attention. Every horror movie I've ever watched has been stupid because I'm not afraid of the Gimp Gorp Man. The Gimp Gorp Man. If you spin three times in your chair and you go, Gimp Gorp, Gimp Gorp, Gimp Gorp, he shows up and he pulls your intestines out your butthole and he makes you a little fucking bow tie with it and then he makes you go work in his bow tie butthole boutique. Oh no, not the Gimp Gorp Man. Don't think it, don't spray it. Okay, all right. Like all horror movies suck worse than worse than Dominic does, right? So every horror, every horror movie I've ever seen has sucked a bag, man. Like for real, they've all just been garbage. I went and saw The Devil Within in the theater. That movie only got me once with a dog jumping against a fence as a jump scare. So garbagey. Watching the movie and you're like, oh no, they're doing that thing. It's so obvious what they're doing here at the end. One of the guys in the audience was like, what the, what, what, is that the end? This is how it ends? And I'm like, yeah, bro, that's how they ended the movie. And he just went, what the fuck? <laughs> Horror movies suck a bag. But last night, it follows, pulled me right in that there was a while where i was watching it like this like for real it got me we paused the movie normally i would just leave i would just be like whatever i don't care keep the money to keep the movie rolling i'm i'm not gonna miss anything what do i care but with this one i'm like bro i want to see it it's a cool concept the idea of a malevolent force that chases after you but only at walking speed it sounds stupid on paper but the execution was surprisingly good. Now, it does have a somewhat dumb premise, okay? So the idea behind it is like, it's essentially an STD, a sexually transmitted demon, what? Right, so that part, it's a little bit, it's a little bit goofy, but that's fine. An arcade, like, some kind of demonic succubus or whatever kind of demon, some kind of primordial lust demon is a workable concept, right? And like, I like elementals that tie into powerful forces of humanity. And obviously when it comes 
to stuff like fucking getting it on, mating, all that. That is a strong motivating factor for all species, right? So playing on that is an interesting concept. So the idea is, what happens is if you sleep with somebody who has this ST demon, then you now have the ST demon. And by that, I mean, you now have like a, like, like, let's say I did you in the butt. I would, I would put the demon tracker inside you, right? <laughs> and now the demon's coming for you. So the idea is basically the main character chick, she gets slept with by this dude. And then he's like, I put the demon in you. So he ties her up so she can't run away so we can explain the scenario to her. And it's basically like, okay, so I gave you this thing and it's just going to ch chase you forever. It's going to chase you forever, but it can only walk. It just walks like normal, like it just walks. So you can escape it, whatever, but it's going to chase you forever unless you sleep with somebody else. And so the idea is this demon is essentially wiping out each person in this chain trying to get back to the very first person the movie is very smart in that it never ever tries to explain where the demon first came from right so there's no explanation of the origin of this which is good because that would have diminished it a big part of what make what makes horror movies work overall and what makes fear work really well is the unknown we are afraid of the unknown way way more than the known it sounds like a b-rated movie similar to final destination final destination was stupid in that it was just like they had dumb stuff like oh, i died so i cheated death and got resurrected by being ball oh, you pumped the water out of my lungs well you can't actually escape death boom the barbecue explodes like those movies are really really fucking stupid this movie had some good in it, enough to be interesting, but it ultimately blew it by the end of it. So it starts out pretty hype, where it's like, okay, there's this unstoppable force. And it's a demon that only you can see, or other people who are in this ST demon chain, right? And at first, when Buddy gives it to her, you just go, well, why didn't he just hook up with like a hooker or something? Just give it to a hooker so it's not your problem anymore. But it's only not your problem as long as the next person in the chain is alive. And that's what gets revealed. When the next person in the chain dies, it, the demon reverts back. So it's going to go all the way down the chain. So there's this successive chain of people who have passed it along, passed it along, passed it along, trying to survive, right? So that was pretty funky. And it led to some interesting stuff. I really like it. Just the slow, like a slow shambling old lady in a in like a um, hospital gown isn't normally terrifying but in this movie it was terrifying i'm like wow this is actually a pretty spooky concept the level of psychological torture the fact that you have to be on guard all the time the fact that it can show up as anybody you know or random people and there's this one scene in the movie where they they do some cheesy crap with it where it's like they don't have the girl at the door talk so they can try and pretend like the demon's there and freak you out a little because the demon doesn't talk. But they do that bit a little cheese bag. But when they open the door to let the girl into the room, right, the demon is there behind her. And when we saw the demon downstairs, it was in this bleeding mouth, pissed on the floor demon kind of thing that's like this chick who's coming forward. But up in the door, they made this amazing choice. They picked this really tall guy to be the, like the zombie part of it. Well, not zombie, the demon. This incarnation of the demon, because it's constantly changing, is a huge tall dude. So he flows in the door right after the actual like normal chick who's their friend. So she comes in and the way this guy comes in, he takes up so much of the frame and so much of the space and looms in such an incredible way. That moment, bro, the music, all of it. I was like, this, this is amazing. Like, I loved it. I loved it. That moment, for real. I was like, bro, what a great moment. You have to see it really to understand overall. And maybe if you saw it individually without the rest of the movie, it might not hit the same way. But that scene, one of the best things I've ever seen in any horror movie ever. I loved it. I loved it, right? So that was really cool. But then... The movie starts to show you some more stuff and you just go, okay, 
What's up? I know he wants to pursue you because I like that scene too. And I wanted to say, like, when he came in, it's like he's moving at the pace of that guy. It wasn't like a slow, tall guy, like, shambling in. Like, he moved quicker. Like, you know, he's still walking and whatever. Yep, but yep, that's absolutely true. And, like, that, it was really for me. It was, yeah, she's right. The, the, the thing can only walk, but it can walk at the speed of whatever incarnation it's in. So if it's an old lady, it shambles. This guy had big, long strides, so he strode into the room and took up space. Like, it was super, super awesome. I really liked that scene. So that was cool. But then uh, the movie decides to, like, show you what happens when the demon catches you. And so it was like some guy's old mom, like dry humping his crotch and sucking his life force out. And it was just like, oh no. Like they started the movie and they showed this chick get messed up by the demon and her body's all broken, but you never see the demon killing her. And that's how they should have kept it. You should have never seen the demon in action because that really took away from the movie. And, um, also, I feel like you need to have a particular set of rules. And having the having this thing non-verbal, making no noise, and it just keeps moving forward. So, like, she's trying to talk to it at one point. She's going, hello? Hello? Because she's not sure, right? Is this, is this the thing? Is this... And there's other people in the hallway who are just kind of looking at her, like, talking back to her, like, well, are you okay kind of thing? Because they can't see it, right? So, the fact that it doesn't speak... The fact that it doesn't do anything other than just follow you forever and once it gets you, it'll kill you, right? That makes it super scary. If it talks, then it can have sentience on a level where you can reason with it. You can try and bargain with it. You can beg it for your life. All these things that ultimately make it boring, right? It's just, it's not nearly as interesting. So I really liked it that the the demon was non-verbal but then at a certain point they have the demon go verbal and just scream to have a kid go yeah and you're just like eh, okay i don't get it why would you scream like that you're literally just a you've been silent the entire time and you're just locked in on your target and that's what you're here for screaming at them would just cause them to run away or be more aware of you whatever it is it makes no sense for it to go verbal so i hated that and i hated even more near the end of the movie when they have the trap set up for it and the trap is supposed to be like basically in case you want to watch it i won't give too much oh, fuck it what i'm gonna say next will give it away anyway so in the in the in the middle of the trap this the this chick's in the middle of a pool right and they put up all these like tvs and other things that plug in so they can try and electrocute the the um the demon right that's the idea so she's in the water and then the demon comes in and just stands there for a while. And it's like, okay, why aren't you moving towards her? And then it just starts to pick stuff up at the edge of the pool and throw it at her. So you're just like, so the demon can't swim? But then the demon does swim. So you go, so it's not hurt by water. And it can swim in water. And it can't die because they shot it multiple times. So why didn't it go in the water? Why did it stand at the edge of the water and throw random things at her? It wasn't like it was aware of the trap. It was just like, it, it, it's like it changed completely how it operates. And it's like the only time it had thrown anything in the entire movie was when somebody was inside a building and it needed to smash a window to get into the building. So it had only lobbed objects ever to gain entrance to a building where its target was. And now it's walking around the edge of the pool throwing things and you just go but what 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 why why this is dumb this is dumb so it started out with so much promise and then so yeah it's called it, it's called it follows that's the name of the movie no ball falcon there you go he got it So yeah, <clears throat> they should have kept it non-verbal the entire time. They never should have revealed the kill because it really diminished the scariness factor. Our minds make us way more afraid 
than reality. And that's why with horror movies, it's really important to main, maintain mystique around your enemy, right? I do like that in this one, there was no conclusion where they triumph, right? So there's that. But the fact that other people can interact with the demon really does change things, right? There's a cool scene where, like, the demon, like, is walking up behind her and gets right up to her because she's not paying attention. And it lifts up her hair so her friends can see it. And they have to, like, bust her loose. It was, it was cool. That was cool. Schwartz. All the updates on art theft I've already done, I covered in that other live stream. So I don't have any other information right now on that. Uh, Fisher Dogma Remastered will be out soon. Like, the movie? Mirror B, Cuban B now claims the Lord of the Board as a belated birthday present to myself. I agree, Magic Lore has so much potential, but it's rarely executed correctly. At least we got Fantasy Geographic to digest it. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm going back to the old school lore, bro. So we're just dealing with good magic lore now. I'm not uh, I'm not making videos on the new lore anymore because it's too aggravating. It's too aggravating. Uh. Ah, uh, yes, Q I'm Cuban B. Yes, Cuban B. <laughs> That's a great part of that movie. All right, Mirror B, your Lord of the Board, buddy. So, yeah, man, that was a, that was a fun movie. I was surprised. I was surprised by that. Do I think the speed and mechanics of magic are getting too fast? Well, I mean, that's kind of like the same question twice, right? Magic is being power crept to infinity. So that that leads to games ending faster. And there's no more room on cards anymore because they have to cram a billion abilities. Like cards have to have come into play abilities and attack triggers and leave play abilities and all these crazy things. And we have to have what, 70 different legendaries in this set where it's just a, a random theme set? Magic is magic is in shambles right now, bro. 100%. 100%. Welcome to Fire Design. Actually, we've moved past Fire Design. Fire Design was like Eldraine times. When the first Eldraine came out, Fire Design was standard sets need to have cards that hit every format. We're past that. We're in full-on Commander Design now, where it's all about Commander. It's all about Commander. Like, Thunder Junction is a Commander is a commander set. It's a Commander set. It's got fucking, what, 50, 60 legendary creatures. Just because we're just like... This is an Omen Path get-together. And guess what? They're doing that every year now. The plan is to give us one of these every year. Some set where they go, don't worry about it. There's no connecting story. But also, get excited about the connecting story. It's dumb. It's dumb. Like, it's just all legendaries. Hey, remember this guy? 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 Wow, what are they all doing on the plane? Nothing. We just told a story with, like, six of these people, and half of them don't do shit. Also, Ashiok is Jace because they want a fucking space baby with Vraska. Oh. So that's the story of Thunder Junction, huh? Yeah, but don't worry. There's more. You know what happens after Thunder Junction? What? This part of the story that actually happens... Oh, actually, after War of Phyrexia, this isn't a follow-up to Thunder Junction. Oh. So, why do we have this here now? Do you want to tell us anything? Shut up! This is one of those flashbacks, like, in an anime. You know, like, in an anime, where you have to spend a whole episode seeing this one guy's tragic backstory? Fuck you! Right? It's so dumb. It's so dumb. Jess, you got a sub, but you couldn't taste the bacon. Well, they probably got that 
fucking shitty, like super thin bacon the same way McDonald's does, right? Where it's like so thin you can see people's lies through it, you know? Kyle, if you don't care about the lore, that will definitely make it easier to enjoy the game. But I bet you do care to a degree. I have a hard time believing anybody only purely cares about the mechanics and that if all the cards were changed to like typewriters and filing cabinets that you would enjoy the game the same way. I put three counters on my filing cabinet. I attack for two with my whisk. You know? Yeah. The flavor does matter. Even if you don't consciously acknowledge it to yourself, it absolutely does. It's it's It, it does matter. Fifty cents per strip. Well, that's way cheaper than it costs to buy bacon normally. That's why you're getting such thin stuff. Kensuke, is Hurlun Minotaur still playable? Mountains exist, so yes. Yes. But being mostly disinterested in the lore is the way to go. I'm going to be real. That J story, I skimmed it because I didn't care. I'm like, okay... Jason Vraska's history, Jason Vraska's history, anything, anything, anything. What am I supposed to give a fuck about this romance? You don't give a fuck about any of your stories or following up. If you wanted me to care about this, you should have had this through line running through all along. You don't get to fucking do this. Oh, pick the ball up at the last second, run down the field with it. No, it's not satisfying. I don't care. I don't care. So, meh. But I've been playing a bunch of Magic, having a good time, man. And I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at more custom card action from my cube. More action like this right here. I'm going to get a whole bunch of proxies of me on magic cards for my cube. That's what's going down. So, Wizards has blown it with the lore. And I'm checked out on the Thunder Junction story. If the entire story's dog shit and then you write, Hey, check it out. I wrote a competent piece. What does that have to do with Thunder Junction? Literally nothing! Literally nothing! Okay. And was that supposed to be Jace and Prof's mind rummaging around for something? Do you care to explain that at all? Nope! Who was that? What was that? That was a bunch of artwork we had kicking around. Okay. Make it make sense. Make it make sense, you fucking pieces of shit. Fuck you. Fuck you. Don't spit in my mouth for being engaged with your product, you dumb bastards. Some, you didn't read the lore back in the day, but your friends did. They'd talk about it and you'd read the flavor text on the cards and it definitely created a better experience. Well, there you go. Now you can't even get flavor text on most cards because there's no fucking room for it. Story spotlight cards just so Annie Flash. Here's Annie Flash crouched. Bring these random permits back from your graveyard. Okay. What part of the story is this? What's he, what, what part of the story is this? It's a story spotlight. Look, it's an old lady crouching I, okay is this the story of dusty gina what the fuck is this jeremy you hope i'll cover bloomboro well you know what buddy i'm hoping that the lore will get better for bloomboro but i'm not really uh, like i would love it but it's not gonna happen it's gonna be fucking dog shit it's gonna be fucking dog shit it's just gonna be dumb writing about some mouse woman and her fucking wife and all this other stupid shit instead of an actual fucking story. They're just going to be like, well, we got to make sure to put our agenda in for the fucking clown face magoos. Or we're going to weep over how beautiful it is. And we'll make everything else hollow because we've checked our boxes for those fucks. Like, come on, man. Come on. What up, Brody? How you doing, buddy? Zircon, I'll talk about it here in a rant. That's far more likely. That's far more likely. I can't take any more of the stupid Capenna shit where they're like, yo, remember um, remember that awesome dude from the Maestros? What the hell was his name? Remember Anheto from the Maestros? Remember that cool story where he outwitted his opponent and beheaded him? Well, we're not talking about him anymore. Here's his daughter and the lady she married, and we're going to follow them running around the city throwing paint at Phyrexians while they kiss each other and go, you're the words written on the page of my heart. 
what? Cram your fucking bullshit. Cram your fucking nonsense. Give me a proper fucking fantasy story. For fuck's sakes, right? And there'll be idiots who come along. Ah, shit, no, this is good. And you don't like it because you're a hate monger. No, I like good stories. I like good stories. If wizards could write good characters and good stories, I wouldn't care about the relationships. But they feel so fake and hollow because they're pandering to dumb fucks who can't tell the difference, who eat it up like fucking garbage. Morons. It was actually really touching. No, it wasn't. You have no emotional depth. Have you ever connected with another human being? Or do you just sit in your fucking basement pretending that fucking reality is something other than it is, bro? Fisher asks, was Ashiok always Jace or just a Jace trick? No. No. And you're perfectly reasonable for asking that because Wizards did the Ashiok Jace shit for no reason. And showing us the story afterwards where Jace is fucking dealing with Vraska and all this doesn't explain why he masqueraded as Ashiok. There's literally no reason. There is no reason for Jace to have been Ashiok. And yet idiots will applaud it like it was some amazing twist. And then they go, I have to go back and read the woe story because that must have been them too. It wasn't. It wasn't. This wasn't some amazing plan by wizards, you fucking clowns. That's not what it was, you dumb bastards. It's clearly they didn't give a fuck. And they're just saying whatever for any story and you morons soak up these moments like they mean something and create extra shit around it that's not in the story and then go it's deep it's not your desperate brain is adding meat to the fucking dry non-fucking not even really bread that they gave you that's the story and then you're going this is so meaty fuck you that's you filling it in it's so annoying the Jace Ashiok thing is nothing. It's nothing. It's dumb bullshit. It's dumb bullshit to just fucking go, what? Yay! Yay! Oh, yeah. Wow, that was amazing twist. Like, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, I couldn't see dumb fucking nonsense coming either. I couldn't see it being Jace for a second because it makes no logical sense it's nonsensical and people go it does make sense because jace like read somebody's mind earlier in the story that's still look the problem is there's no reason for jace to be ashiok you fucking fool it triggers me man it triggers me my brain works my brain works like uh, people don't understand how deeply I see into shit and how quickly like I'll give you an example I went to the fucking doctor's office today and we were talking and I looked at him and I said, bro, it must be really difficult for you because you have to care about people, right? You have to care about people's health and you have to watch them fall apart and you tell them what to do and either they follow your advice or don't. So you have to be connected enough to care about people so you can continue to help them and do your job right, but not so connected that watching them fall apart destroys you. And he looked at me and he's like, I don't know how you figured all that out from one sentence. And he looked like his eyes were wet in the way your eyes get wet when somebody else understands a fundamental truth about you. So, bro, like, I pick up on tons of fucking details. I pay attention to everything that's going on. If things make sense, I am so happy. But most of the time, they don't. And it's so aggravating because it's so obvious how you could do it in a way that makes sense. And it just pisses me off so much. I hate being punished for being intelligent and insightful. I hate it. It's completely fucking unfair. It's completely unfair. Kyle Driver, Super Chat says, I really appreciate you. A lot of my hobbies, everyone's so falsely positive. Everyone's scared to be honest. You're a treasure. Well, thanks, buddy. I don't want to be fucking fake and go, oh, well, let's just all pretend like it's all awesome. I'll say where I'm having a good time and I'll say where I'm not. I'm having a good time playing magic. I'm not having a good time with the lore because it sucks unwashed dicks, bro. What do I think about the fact that they're changing uh, the end of the battlefield? I don't care. At, like the people are getting upset about that. It's like, you know what it means when it says enters and people are going to know what that means. Dies means goes to the graveyard. Enters means comes into play. So it's shorthand it's fine. We don't need the entire length there. Wizards clearly needs the real estate to slap more abilities onto cards. So for me, it doesn't change anything, really. Exactly. Jeremy, bingo. 
Inclusion is great because it's nice for people to see themselves in stories. But when it's empty bullshit, it's meaningless. That's why I can't appreciate Wizards fucking relationships between two ladies or two dudes. But shit like the assassin from the Borgias, bro? That guy, his tortured existence, all that? Absolutely fucking believable. This is what I like about Japanese anime. They can fucking go, yo, we've got these dudes. They're in a same-sex relationship. We got this person. They're full-on swapping into other genders. And guess what? It all feels like actual story. Like back in the day when they turned Elminster into a woman. Because my star is like, yo, you got to learn about the fucking lady perspective. So to broaden your horizon. So out, you're going to live as a lady for a while. And he did. Fell in love with a fucking dude. Lived that way and was fucking happy. And it felt like an actual story. Not empty bullshit to pander to fucking clowns who can't see that they're being fucking tricked and that Wizards doesn't give a shit about you, bro. They would write a story for other countries about how you got thrown off the fucking roof. So don't even. The company doesn't fucking care about you. They do not. And it's empty bullshit that does not resonate with your humanity. They're not treating you like a person. They're using you as a marketing tool, all right? That's it. They don't respect you. They don't care about you. They're using you. And that's why the stories are fucking hollow and empty. I can only connect with actual people. And they have to be written as actual people. It's obnoxious. Mel Master says, to be intelligent is to be alone. Bro, do you know, when I was a teen, I had such a hard time with that, man. I really wanted to be stupid. I wanted to be dumb. Like realizing that I wasn't dumb was actually terrifying because I'm like, I'm just fumbling through life, bro. I'm just fumbling through life clueless. And then you realize, whoa, everybody is. Everybody's fumbling through life clueless. And most of the people I meet are significantly dumber than me. Oh no. Like for a long time, I thought I had average. I'm like, no, I'm just average intelligence. And you realize, no, 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 no. I need to be average. That means there'll be way more smarter people out there. I do not want to be, please don't tell me I'm high on the intelligence curve because that's terrifying. That's terrifying. It's terrifying. Every day you can't read. Oh yeah, the marker. I got to do something about the marker. Mirror B's Lord of the Board of Ten. Thought about the Hatcher hugging pillow. Just take Ashiok and Jace pick and change the Jace half to Hatcher's face. <laughs> oh, so I just I like genuinely written characters. That's it. I hate this current era, like empty, empty. Okay, here's the list of ingredients they have to be, and it's like, is human on that list anywhere? Is believable anywhere? Like fucking reality. I don't know how, I don't know how people accept this fucking garbage. Like for real, for real. And fucking another thing that drives me crazy is people are too stupid to understand what I'm saying. We'll be like, you're a fucking hate monger. No moron. No, no idiot. No. All right. I got no problem with people and their fucking relationships and any of that. So you can cram your stupid agenda up your fucking ass, right? You should fucking realize that I'm on your fucking side, stupid. I want fucking people that you fucking think that I don't like to actually be treated properly like they're fucking humans and represented properly like they're humans and not stilted bullshit to be shoved up going, hey, are you dumb enough to fall for this? Are you dumb enough to fall for this? There's no depth to this, but this is you. This empty bullshit is you. Buy our product, you fucking loser. Because that's what that is. That's what that is. They're spitting in your fucking mouth. And you're going, um, um, um. Were you eating Skittles before you spit in my mouth? I love it. Taste the rainbow. Fucking stupid. Millmaster says, don't be a bitch. Are there good markers on your Amazon wish list? That's a good question. Do I even have access to that on this computer now? I don't even know. Let's find out. Uh, okay, here's the list. Nope. Looks like I don't. <laughs> I don't think I've put anything on this list in a long time. 
Uh, nope. I guess I'll have to. That's that's a good point, Mill Master. Thanks, buddy. I'm gonna make a note. I'm gonna make a note of that. Make a note. I'll probably promptly forget. Oh, someone. He's in this terrible market to do it. Great. It marks my fingers more than the paper. Nobody, nobody with a brain likes being treated like they're fucking stupid. And when you make something that's supposed to be somebody, but you put no effort into it, it's not going to, it's not going to ring true. It's not going to ring true to people. That's the problem. That's the problem. But regardless, it doesn't matter. I will continue to get people telling me that I should not be alive because of the things that I say like that, which is fucking <laughs> ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But that's the fucking reality. I have to deal with fucking moron clowns calling me a fucking hate monger because I advocate for humanity. <laughs> All right, whatever, man. Knock yourself out. Knock yourself out. Mayor B, you think I'm the most relatable YouTuber out there? Well, thanks, buddy. I'm sure there's people who are more relatable than me, but I'm pretty fucking, I'm pretty chill. I'm pretty chill. Well, <laughs> I do rant a lot, but you know what I mean overall. I give a shit about people, right? And I pay attention to them. What do you think the, one of the reasons I could be so fucking good at insulting people as well is because I have so much compassion and understand people. So it's easy to figure out what they're about and then use that against them. <laughs> But only in a jokey, fun way. You know what I mean? I never really go out of my way to be awful to anybody. Because if somebody's garbage, I'm just like, I don't, I'm not going to deal with you. I'm just not even. I'm not even. You know? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Doomblade says that gender swap sounds like a lewd animation somewhere. And I'm glad I don't read the new Lord. Uh, Lord I'm intelligent, not smart. I love BG's good stories. Stick to the good stories, bro. Stick to the good stories. Thanks to the super chat. Thanks for the super chat. Cthulhu, how am I going with the list of anime from the stream a while back? I think it's over here. I think it's over here, probably. Uh, right now, we're still watching No Guns Life. We're finishing up the second season of No Guns Life. It's pretty good, man. It's pretty good. The whole extended concept and everything is interesting. Mirror B says, I mean, your content and streams help me survive some of the darkest spots in life. You're more the people's champ than Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Bro, honestly, I love hearing from people telling me like, yo, what you did helped me when I was having a hard time. Because everybody fucking struggles. And I've been dealing with a lot of struggles. And people genuinely matter. So the fact that like, I know... What I do in, in one way is completely inconsequential because I just spend my time talking about games and goofing around the internet and entertaining. So on one hand, it's completely cons like inconsequential and doesn't mean anything. But on the other hand, it gives a bunch of people distraction from things in their life that are very hard for them, which helps them continue to go onwards, which is absolutely consequential. So it's an interesting mix of the two. And I know that like just small things can mean a lot and i know stuff has helped me that way in the past so i love that what uh, i love that what i do has this kind of uh effect for some people you know and it doesn't matter how many people come to me and tell me that i should fucking die it's crazy it's crazy that the shit can even still get through like the youtube comment filters and shit some of it's getting it's funny people come by like this guy deletes a startling amount of comments and it's like no bro you must type a lot of shit that like Google doesn't like and deletes because if you think I've deleted a bunch of your comments, if I've deleted a couple of your comments, I'm just going to mute you. You wouldn't even get the opportunity. It's Google deleting your comments. And what you're saying is so heinous that Google's just like, no, bro, your, your shit's garbage. I'm just not going to show anybody. So, but yeah, man, those people come along and try and stop me and say all this crazy shit to me. And I'm just like, bro, why would I listen to you? There's people out there who are having a genuine hard time in life. Why, whatever, yeah, you hate me, who cares? You hating me gives you something to distract you from something you're unhappy about in life as well, right? So you hating me is me helping you on one level in a very weird, twisted way, right? It's like, because it doesn't, it doesn't 
get to me. I don't sit there and go, oh no, people wish I was dead. It's like, these are kids acting up. And none of them, none of them can really mean it. Because people aren't really like that. They're just jackasses online. You know what I mean? Like, there's very few people who are actually broken like that. And most of it is just empty words as they flare out because they don't like that I did a live stream talking about Sweet Baby. Or I didn't tell the story the exact right way and cover it the right way. Oh, you didn't cover this aspect, so you're trying to do this. And it's like, sure, man. Sure. What else? Bo says, you didn't save me from dark times, but you did provide much needed good entertainment over all the other crap out there to watch. Well, Bo, I'm glad. I'm glad that you don't have to worry about dark times. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that things go pretty smoothly for you because I see you out there doing a lot for people, bro. And I genuinely appreciate you. I see you in a number of different locations, showing the love to a number of different people. And that is pure goodness. So keep it up. Keep being you, you fucking goofy looking twink. Doomblade says, by the way, have you seen Kona Suba? The main character gets Esekai'd and brings a goddess with him out of pure pettiness and completely ruins their adventure. Have I seen Kona Suba? Bro. Darkness? Darkness? That blonde hottie who's all like, oh no. Oh, are you going to, are you going to ravish and defile me? And she's like, don't you do these evil things to me. But she so wants it, bro. Like she's totally, totally into punish me, Papa. Oh, no, I don't want to be punished, you scoundrel. Oh, I'm going to punish you real good. Like, hell yeah. No, I know Konosuba. I know, I know that show. I know that show. You don't need no light in that darkness, son. Churro flavored Oreos? I don't know, Eric. Pretty much every variant of Oreo I've had has been terrible. Terrible. Well, that's it. Amir B, you touch on it exactly. People forget people be people. That is, that is the summary of it. And that's the way that I describe it to people, but not in those words. Basically, I'm not a person to them. I am the exact same difference as a brand, right? So they don't feel like they're criticizing me as a person so much, but as a brand. And that is the difference. So it is what it is, man. It is what it is. And let's also be real. There's a bunch of dysfunctional people in the magic community. There really is. More than in other communities. I've talked to other YouTubers and confirmed this. I've seen it just in the content I make. Magic has a bunch of socially inept fucksticks who really love their own opinions, no matter how ignorant they are. It's fucking crazy. There's more mentally deranged people involved with magic than a lot of other things out there. Break stop lemon Oreos? Oh, that sounds gross. Benji says, life's a barrel of fun with you in it. Wait, I ain't getting, I ain't getting in the barrel. I ain't getting, I know what happens to who's in the barrel, bro. You fucking empty the bunghole, then you fill the bunghole. Uh, oh! Speaking of bungholes, guys, I talked to I talked to the doctor about the old fingers, fingers in the butt, finger button, right? So, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember, like a million years ago, I made a joke. I made a joke about, um... Uh, like I was going to go to the doctor, right? And like, we're, cause people like to make jokes. Oh, going to the doctor, eh? He's going to fucking give you the old prostate exam. So I said, what I was going to do is I was going to train my asshole up, bro. I was going to fucking do sphincter flexes until I got like an iron grip with it. And then once he put his finger in there, I was going to go <laughs> and grab it, right? Grab it with my fucking butthole. Bam. Got your finger. I ain't giving your finger back until you give me your wallet. So that's what I said to him. I said, I said to the doc, I was like, all right, bro, I got a medical, I got a medical question for you. <laughs> He's like, all right. I was like, so like, you know, when you stick your finger in the butt, can somebody train, like, can somebody strengthen their sphincter enough to grab your finger so you can't pull it out? And he's like, no, nah, it's not possible. He's like, see, people tense up when you're going in. 
but once you're in. And I just started laughing. I'm just like, my doctor's awesome. He's great. I really like him. And I found out today that he really likes me as well, actually. Because I said to him, I'm like, bro, I appreciate that you take the time to listen to all my concerns. And I appreciate that you're here doing this job. And he's like, bro, I appreciate you as like uh, <laughs> as one of my patients because there's a bunch of people who can be just really rude and you're appreciative and on top of that you're interesting it's like there is that man i remember making my other doctor my other doctor laugh when i was like okay i got a medical question for you can you think of a reason that i should not fuck a watermelon right and he's just, i was like it's probably the weirdest question you got all week huh he's like all oh, month dude and then he sat and he's like e coli I'm like, okay, there you go. You got some. Thanks, man. <laughs> I'm a ridiculous human being. Dark Star, my videos have prevented you from putting in a made request form. <laughs> well, actually, I said that. I said that to the doctor today. I said, like, whatever. Oh, yeah, we were talking about the differences between men and women and how women are way more resilient to cold, like getting colds pain and stuff and he's like he's like yeah he's like dudes are bad for not coming to the doctor women will talk like they'll complain about smaller things going on with them but they're so tough and strong about the harder stuff they have to deal with it's crazy and then we started talking about their periods and all the fucking blood loss and shit and i said bro if i was fucking bleeding out every month and i was losing all that iron i'd just be like where's the fucking maid forms you know like one hondo <laughs> like we <laughs> James Towns, you like you just like him for his fingers, bro. I haven't had my I haven't had my um my butt fingered yet, but I decided that when it does happen, when it comes time, I'm gonna focus my energies and I'm gonna make sure that my butthole is the loosest butt he's ever been in. I'm just gonna be like, you'll receive no resistance from the villagers here. Be kind. <laughs> I will yell that. <laughs> I will yell that as I. I'm gonna I'm gonna practice loosening my butthole for him. <laughs> that does not sound like I'm talking about going to see my doctor. Yeah, whatever. It actually I actually did think that though. When he's like, everybody tenses up, I'm gonna be the one guy who's not tense. I am very calm! My butthole is the calm tip of a mountain, and I am the Buddha sitting upon it. Jeremy's is getting all its terrible prostate issues, losing hair. Well, I don't know, bro. I don't got. <laughs> I make other people lose their hair. <laughs> I got a hell of a lot of hair for a fucking 45 year old guy, huh? I just saw some of it fall out as I fucking said that. <laughs> What up, Pokey Choker? How you doing, buddy? Oh. So, whatever, man. I got some I got some medical stuff that I got to get sorted out, but hopefully I'll be in good shape. My doctor said that I'm going to have a normal lifespan or whatever, so there's nothing nothing that way unless it turns out that when I go and get these tests that somehow there's like some cancer that comes up. It's not that people think I have cancer right now, so let's be very clear. It's just Whenever they check stuff, they're always, let's take a peek around and make sure. You never know, right? You never know. Onion says, thank you for getting, I got you into Magic and you won your first Commander game last week at Friday Night Magic. Nice, buddy. Enjoy. Magic's the best. Magic is the best. What up, Laura? Hope my butthole exam comes out fine. I'm sure it will. I do everything well. So I'm, I'm sure the doctor will say, bro. You have a you have the elac the elasticity of your butthole, many feet. You know what I mean? I bet I have the exact right amount of like tightness and wrinklage and the fucking O ring. You know, it's all ah beautiful, beautiful. I mean, I, I it's hard to tell. You know, when you turn around and stare at the, over your neck at the mirror while you spread your butt cheeks to try and stare into your own asshole, it's not the same. It's not the same, right? Because I mean, how many have you looked at? The doctors looked at a lot. So, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Hear me out. Hear me out. 
before you go in for your prostate exam, have somebody like you fucking spread your butt cheeks and somebody writes or draws like a face inside. So like you can't see it at all until the cheeks are whoo, welcome to the secret garden. And there's like elephant ears or something painted on either side of your like uh, markered on either side of the hole. <laughs> oh, Pokey Choker having a good time. Glad to swing into a live stream. Hell yeah, buddy. Got off early because of a storm. Oh, a perfect storm. Well, if you missed the live streams, just so you know, I do have the live stream archive where you can catch them afterwards. Jess, you impressed your depot nurse saying how magic's the most complex game ever made? Yeah, she was probably impressed that you weren't fucking yammering about Bigfoot and ghosts and stuff. Hey, nurse, did you know a bottle of bleach jumped into my face when I was in the bathroom once? And she's like, no, it didn't. Oh, did you know magic cards are a complex game? Oh, shit, are you talking about something in reality? I'm impressed. Jeremy, a lot of soul searching, but you end up with a better, happier, kinder outlook on life. You know what, bro? Suffering makes you a better person, for real. Some of the people who are the worst people, who are they're the ones who've had everything handed to them and haven't suffered. So they can't... Suffering causes you to see people outside yourself. Because people are so self-centered, They a lot of times they need to have the, the experience themselves to be able to confer it on others. So I can't understand other people's pain until I experience pain myself. Right? That's it. Oh, I can't walk around because I got a bum knee or whatever. That happens to you for a bit. Now you see the old guy with his legs not working so much and you go, whoa, that's got to be way worse than what I dealt with, right? Suffering equals Sonder. And without Sonder, you got nothing. You got what? What the fuck do you got? Solipsism? That's nothing. That's empty garbage, right? Laura, to this day, your husband won't let you see his butthole. What does he make you close your eyes when you lick it? You can, you can stare right into the fucking devil's abyss. What do I care, man? Help you aim your tongue. Like that. <laughs> I got news for you, Laura. Your husband is into other guys. That's why he won't let you see his butthole. Because it's fucking stretched out like a hefty bag that's been fucking squeezed over a pine tree. All bumpy and weird and stuff. You just ask him. Be like, will you not let me see your butthole because of all the dudes that have been in it? Because I just learned the truth on the internet about you. Right? Also, if he won't let you see it, he probably does, he's probably going to be upset that you're talking about it online. Laura! Laura! Come on now. Your husband's going to be mad you're talking about his butthole online. <laughs> Eric, you work at a butcher counter. You want you want a weird looking friend of yours to come in and ask what cut of meat would feel good on his dick? You don't. You can just tell your friend you want him, Eric. Like if you're dreaming about one of your friends coming in and talking about the meat at the butcher counter... And his dick, you don't have to pretend it's an April Fool's joke and be like, let me just put the tip in my mouth for an April Fool's joke. You know what would be really, really funny? Is if you finished in my mouth. Like, that would be an amazing April Fool's joke, right? Because I work at a butcher shop, so put your meat in my mouth. Just don't be yourself, bro. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Be happy to be who you are. Like, if I was into dudes, I would suck every fucking dick I could. That's what I'd be doing right now. I'd have fucking two of them jamming against my eye sockets and fucking, they'd be like up my fucking nose. Get the guys with the small ones up my nose, right? All of it. All of it. Live your best life. <laughs> Millmaster, get out of here with your no get out of here with your nonsense theories. Anthony, Ants Canada, I have seen some of their content because a long time ago, there's a dude by the name of Serta, and he loved supporting me and Ants Canada. And you can see which one of them turned into a success, 
and you can see which one of them yells about people's husbands buttholes on the internet one of them makes one of them has millions of subscribers that makes educational videos that are watched by kids and who are learning and the others an internet jackass <laughs> <coughs> oh. oh yeah every day exactly Sonder is that is correct that's the feeling of realizing that everyone including strangers passing in the street has a life as complex as your own like when you wander down the street with a mustard stain on your shirt you go I'm a slob everybody can see it and they think I'm garbage and they think poorly of me most people don't even notice and the people who do go oh that guy's mustard on his shirt and that's it they don't think you're a piece of garbage they barely think about you but because you're so self-obsessed you think they're thinking about you right and Sonder is realizing that guy is not thinking about me at all and if he is it's for a split second if you think about how much you think about other people you'll realize how little people think of you right and I know that because I think of other people, I think more than the average person does. I don't know for sure, but I think that I do. My mom told me, and she's such a nice lady who when brought me up, told me, you don't even say people are weird, you just say they're different. This lady told me I care too much about people, and I have to like, oh, you got too good a heart, you care too much about people, and whatever. I mean, that's part of why I've got such a rough exterior. It helps. It helps, you know? Laura says, I will definitely not shame. I'm also not too eager to see it considering the smells that come out of it. It's, you know what? I think you found the right balance. I think you found the right balance for, uh, for your wedding. I'm not wedding, for your marriage. You guys, you guys know what works best for you, right? You both followed your bliss. Theirs was ants, yours is strangers, buttholes, and magic. Truth hurts, right, Lizzo? <laughs> <laughs> you have a face that says you do care too much i do look at this look at this line this is from staring at the world and going what the fuck why no look at what it's done look at what the world's done to me it's etched it deep in man you can see it my beautiful fucking my beautiful youthful face and skin has been turned into a confused angry old leather fucking handbag Stop caring. No. Caring about people is awesome. I'm glad I do, man. Humanity is the only thing that matters, and I would never want to stop caring about people. I fundamentally don't understand people who don't at all. Like, I, it's, it's insane to me. It's insane to me. People are the fucking best thing on the planet, and I love making them happy. It delights me infinitely that I can say absurd things and elicit a fucking unexpected laughter response from somebody, even for things they don't think should be funny. That is very gratifying, right? We, I was sitting in a McDonald's with my girlfriend the one time, had no idea they have trash compactors inside the trash cans. So all of a sudden it starts beeping, beep, beep, beep. I'm like, what is going on? Like a truck is backing up and it gets crushed. And my lady goes, yo, they have trash compactors in the trash cans here. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. Also, I guess we know where to come if we have an unwanted baby. And this old lady's walking by and she starts laughing. <laughs> and then she's like, that's horrible. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't get to do that. You laughed fucking first. You're a garbage person just like me. Right? Like, <laughs> I love that I can make people laugh against their will. You know? Oh, I'm unhappy. Well, you're going to be happy for a second at least when i crack this joke it's nice man it's nice seeing the relief on their face when somebody's really unhappy and then they just have that little brief minute of a smile even if it's not a minute even if it's a second man like comedy is a very fucking special thing being able to make people laugh is incredible because sometimes when you're in the darkness and things are really heavy that little pinpoint blast of light that comes in from comedy that's the breather you need. You're running. You're running from the darkness. Now you, oh, I got to stop for a second. And the darkness might be back. But for that moment, I can catch my breath. I'm here. I'm okay. It's going to be okay. Right? Like, bro, there's nothing, there's nothing more valuable than people. And being able to help people is the fucking best. So I do it my way. It ain't for everybody. Because if you don't have a kind of humor that resonates with me, what are you going to do? Right? If you don't have the same kind of sense of humor, oh, that's not true, actually. I make people laugh who like really like tame humor as well i can i can adjust it as needed so that's not exactly accurate but you know 
Kenny, you like the trash compactor story? Yeah, it was funny, man. It's funny when people laugh and then afterwards go, oh, and it's like, no, 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 no. You thought it was funny. We leave it at that. Dark humor is a valid tool to deal with existence. The problem isn't people joking about it. The problem would be people doing it. Mountain Jam. You've already spent too much time thinking about the Ashiok Chase thing. Here's what it was. It's a dumb bullshit nothing moment that never will mean anything, so don't even worry about it. Aaron, your birthday's tomorrow. Oh, so it's not your birthday, just like everybody in here. Well, congratulations on not being special and it not being your birthday. Wow. Guess what? It's also not my birthday. Woo! whoop de doo It's not my birthday. Hey, everybody. It's also not your birthday. Wow, my birthday is a different day. Congratulations. You were born on a different day. <laughs> I ain't wishing you a fucking happier early birthday. You got to fucking live to your birthday. That's how that works. That's how that works. Today ain't your fucking birthday. And anybody wishes you happy birthday today doesn't give a shit about you. They're just doing it as a fucking write-off. The same way that people will type that shit in early on Facebook. Because they don't fucking care about you. So have fun. Anybody who says it here in the chat doesn't give a shit about you, bro. <laughs> See you later, Jeremy. Keith, you're in so you're in South Korea. Oh, you're on a train to Busan. That's a movie. That's a movie. Oh, I'm on the train to Busan. Wee! Yes, I'm on the stream. Chugga 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 chugga. <laughs> Type G, your cat died on your birthday. That's a great present. Cause guess what? Cats are fucking terrible pets. So that's the universe doing you a favor. It's like congratulations. Get a real pet, like a dog, or nothing, you know? Because cats, they never love you. They don't care about you. Cats are fucking users, man. Why would you ever want one of those? Why you want somebody you got to pay every, every for everything, and they just use you? Like, if you want that, get a wife. That's what I did. If you want some fucking animal to live in your house who doesn't like you, doesn't respect you, costs you resources, and will eat you when you're dead, get a fucking wife. That's what I did. Carly's been fucking slowly destroying my soul. Why do you think I'm always yell? I used to be happy. You guys never saw me before, right? You only known me in the in the post Carly time. I was a, I was like happy once. I know it probably sounds crazy. Once upon a time I was happy, but she ate my money and she ate my happiness, and now she's gonna eat me, and that's fine because I gave up. I don't care, whatever. I'm just a husk, man. So why would you need a cat? Why would you need a cat, man? Cats are the worst. David says, wife and I joined the stream tonight staring into your husband's butthole. Bro, you're welcome for me setting the ambiance, so. Slide a couple bucks to your friendly local streamer for setting the ambiance, bro. When your lady's tongue in your butt tonight, be like, I got a PayPal fucking, I got a PayPal, <laughs> I got a PayPal mic, $6.66, because we're going down the devil's highway. <laughs> There's so many people out there just running professional streams. Like, <laughs> and then there's this. And there's this. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, McGarrow, you don't think you would have survived quarantine without your cat? Well, it's unfortunate you had to eat your cat during quarantine to survive, but you're better off without it because cats, as I've covered, are fucking terrible. So, that's good. Break stop your interneting properly. <laughs> Change your opinion based on my preferences only. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. <laughs> what up, Kurt? How you doing?
Did I ask my doctor if it's okay for Carly to eat me? No, of course not. Of course not. Because I've been slowly fucking poisoning myself so that when she does fucking unhinge her jaw and swallow my corpse fucking whole, that she won't be able to go and latch her insidious little claws into another poor sucker, right? I die so that others may live. I sacrifice myself. I poison this glorious temple to fucking help mankind. That's the kind of guy I am. Joe says, professional streams are boring. This shit, this shit with friends. I, I find a lot of them boring too, honestly. A lot of streams I've gone to, I found very dull. But, you know, I have a particular, a particular set of tastes, so... Aaron, your guinea pigs love this show? Well, you know what, buddy? I wish your guinea pigs a happy birthday, even though it's not their birthday, but not you. But not you. Because it's not your fucking birthday. Fisher, your rats like the intro music? They get excited and jump around? Well, when I created it, I thought, what will get rats excited? That was actually the guiding principle of the, of the intro. <laughs> <laughs> they call me the guinea pig whisper i just lean in and go you fucking suck <laughs> i destroy their self-esteem <laughs> husk man sounds like a, t a terrible superhero yeah right towns L listen man you have no fucking foresight or probably no foreskin either either yeah you got four nothing right you ain't even got four arms your arms end before they get to the four arms you fucking joke bro you think husk man sounds like a fucking terrible superhero wait until you fucking want to have a bunch of corn dickhead what if you want to have a fucking hundred pieces of corn you're gonna husk them yourself Nah, that's when you call fucking husk man. Husk man, help me. I don't have the fucking upper body strength because I don't have forearms to husk this corn and I can't jam a hundred corn cobs up my own butt and husk them. So there you go. Husk man is a good superhero. You're the one who sucks. How am I doing on art card stock for the Box of Glory? I've got a decent amount. I got a decent amount of art cards. It looks like tonight's art card for the Lord of the Board, or well, Towns right now, is going to be this one from Wilds of Eldraine. What? Have I ever been to the U.S.? Yeah, like a fucking tons of times. Tons of times. I'm not that far from the border, right? So I've been there a bunch. Been there a bunch. They watch it on the 52-inch TV in the front room. It's like a movie theater. Bah, bah, bah. Front row seating! Yeah, I've been to America a bunch. A bunch. But I don't have a passport right now to go. So there was a few opportunities I would have had to go to different events there. But because I didn't have my passport or anything, that did not pan out. David sent a $10 super chat, but it never showed up. Uh, it might be delayed. Sometimes it takes a little while for it to process through. So maybe just wait a little bit and see if it shows up. I don't know. Because, I mean, there were people who were trying to super chat battle yesterday. And um, the timing of their theirs came in staggered after other people. So... Sometimes it can take a bit to process when they're just like, is this a legitimate transaction? Or I don't know. I have no idea what actually slows it down. Yeah, right, Mill Master. Code, if I show up at that place, you're just going to be like, I want to play It Follows. And you're just going to follow me around doing your weird little goobly dances. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
James Adams has currently spent the 10 already. Shut up, man. I don't like it. Truth hurts. <laughs> Shh. Don't. <laughs> let me. Let me. Let me think that I'm the one who's going to get to enjoy it. <laughs> Ron Jenna says, listen, am I too lazy to go back? I, I'm too lazy to go back. Could you just recap the stream for me so far? Or I can just go fuck myself. Either works. Well, you know what? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I will encapsulate the stream for you, man. Uh, make sure to stare into your husband's butthole and also artifact lands in every pack. That pretty much covers the entirety of the stream. We had like the romance portion where we did couples counseling and then we talked about the magic booster packs and artifact lands. So that's really all you need to know. Oh, and you can't grab a doctor's, you can't, you can't, no matter how much you train your sphincter, it's not possible to retain possession of a doctor's finger. They'll just be able to pull it out when they want to. It's going in that's the problem. Getting the finger back out, even if you grab as hard as you can, they're just going to be able to pull it out. So, that's, that's the summary of the stream. It's the box of glory. Oh, man, I had to get up early for that doctor nonsense. Oh, it wasn't nonsense, but I just hate getting up early. It always makes me fucking cranky. I was cranky in the fucking morning stream. I was cranky because of it. <laughs> Aaron, see you later, buddy. What up, Dragon Raider? I'm doing good. How you doing? <coughs> Right after I say that. <laughs> Dave, a Bloomboro's when your wife is when your wife D and D kids and you are coming back to Magic to play Commander. I'm looking forward to Bloomboro. I'm hyped. Like, I won't be getting much Thunder Junction. I'll go play in the pre-release, but there's no way I'm gonna be getting much of it. Just because that's how things are gonna work out. But that doesn't trouble me that much. But the idea of not being able to get Bloomboro is a bummer. So I'm. Um, Gonna get to do the Bloomboro pre-release, most likely. But other than that, it's dicey and up in the air. So I might just have to try and get all my satisfaction through Arena. So I'm marshalling my resources further so that I can Bloomboro on there. I like having the real cards, but magic has become prohibitively expensive for me. It's not the only thing that's going up in price and other stuff is. So, yeah, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? But I'm hyped for it. I'm hyped for it. It should be a good time. That's right, Towns. Write it on your own art card and then eat it. <laughs> Every day. Oh, is that the link to the stream archive? Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. What up, Thompson? How you doing? <sighs> so yeah, Bloomboro is definitely, that's where my hope is currently. That's my hope for this year. That's going to be the most enjoyable set for me. The flavor of it. So yeah, when it comes to Thunder Junction, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to like get the mastery pass on arena, but I'm not going to try and f complete the set and get everything. Bloomboro is the one. Then I'm totally just going to, let's go, let's go. That's the current plan. I just want to have a good time, man. I've been having fun playing Magic, right? Like, that part has been fun. But the lore has just been so barren lately. Oh, uh, David, oh, you're used to getting hosed by 40K already. Well, fair enough, man. Fair enough. There's lots of different companies that are happy to take your money and leave you dissatisfied <laughs> mm. 
Mm. I definitely am looking forward to the idea of making a bunch of me themed proxies for my cube. I <laughs> that that really that really seems like a lot of fun to me. There's already a couple a couple of different like um art goofy goofy looking artwork AI like melds that use my face into artwork for a couple of different cards. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I got to wait for the uh, people from the proxy company to get back to me, too, with the code that I can use for the proxies that I'm being rewarded with for making that video. But yeah, just old, old, old cards for the cube and stuff like that are mostly... I'm, I'm interested more in doing the old school craziness as opposed to making proxies of the brand new stuff like Bloomboro and whatever. If it's kicking around, I still like like and want regular magic cards. I'm not against them, right? So I'm not just like intended. I, I want actual Bloomboro because I think it'd be fun. I want to enjoy my hobby the way I like to with the real physical cards. But the proxies let me have a bunch of crazy shit I wouldn't have in my cube otherwise because like our moxes and all that stuff that's so far outside my range that it's like, yep, I'm just going to use these. I'm just going to use these. I got some more Kool-Aid as well. Got some more Kool-Aid. I've been trying like 15 different variations since I quit drinking Barks. I got some different like lemonade combinations. Like I think it's blue raspberry lemonade. And then... Is it strawberry lemonade? And there's a strawberry kiwi? I don't know. Uh, off topic, but did I see the D&D Lego set? No, I didn't. Legos are cool, but I don't keep up with Lego. I remember the kids down the street had a ton of Lego, and they had all the cool Transformers and stuff. And I didn't have Lego or Transformers, so I liked going over and playing with all their Lego and making stuff, because Lego's neat. But yeah, I don't, I don't keep up on Lego at all, because I literally own... No Lego, like none. So, Mountain Jam, yeah, bro. Getting rid of the Barks root beer has worked out well for me. Cutting out uh, the caffeine has made a difference. And I was just drinking like so much of it. And it's so acidic, man. So, acid reflux and all that kind of stuff. It's getting better. It's getting better. I have way less of that going on now that I, uh, I don't mess around with that stuff anymore. I mean, I'll have a little bit of it if, let's say I'm out. Like, I haven't completely taken Barks off the menu. If I go out to eat at, like, a fast food restaurant or something like that, then I'll have, you know. Like, now it's just, like, probably most normal people in moderation instead of every day, numerous times, you know? Rotten, you had that problem with Mountain Dew? It's, it's sweet sugar water. It's really easy to, uh, it's really easy to drink it down, you know? It blew my mind to find out that, like, two cans of Barks had, like, more calories than my breakfast. And I'm just like, what? What? I thought my breakfast was so hearty. <laughs> that was very wrong. I was very wrong. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Well, I don't know what to tell you, David. It looks like that super chat that you did ain't coming through, man. So I don't know if it's going to pop up later, but if it doesn't, then like if there's a problem and it doesn't show up, they'll just refund you. Like that's what's happened in the past. So if they don't automatically do it, then you can send them a message saying, yo, like I, this didn't get to happen. So give me my money back, you know? <laughs> Hmm. Oh yeah, and in the future there's always a workaround too, just so you know. If if for some reason the super chats aren't working for you, there is the option to use the PayPal in the description and it counts the same way. We do it all the same way. But at this point, it's time for me to get going. And David, I appreciate that you just wanted to gift me for my good content. 
appreciate that because that's how I pay my fucking bills. So I'm not going to pretend like I'm not disappointed that it didn't come through. I'm never happy with YouTube when a super chat doesn't come through because I'm like, come on, man. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? But it is what it is, right? It is what it is. So I'd say it's the thought that counts, but it's not. It's the fucking money that's counts. <laughs> because that's what I count, right? <laughs> Anyways, thanks for coming and hanging out. Rotten Agenda, you are the official Lord of the Board at the end of the stream. That means you will be put on the art card and added in to the Box of Glory. Congratulations. Thanks for coming, my friends. It's unfortunate that my life just ended. <laughs>